Hello everyone and welcome to um, episode three of this tutorial series in docking small molecules to proteins um, using Vena and visualizing those interactions using Discovery Studio. Um, hopefully this series will help you to design your own compounds and dock them um, and give you some ideas and some introduction um, to uh, structure-based drug design and molecular docking. So um, in the last two episodes, we initially docked a um, we we docked a fragment um, and we checked it against its um, crystal structure to check the reliability. Um, and we also studied the interactions that, that it was forming, and we found a few inter interesting um, interactions there, such as hydrogen bonding and uh, pi cation interactions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so now I want to talk about um, designing your own molecules based on the interactions um, that, that we previously observed. So this is a compound um, that I'm currently making in the lab. And um, as you can see, it's quite similar to the fragment that we docked. There's a kind of alcohol chain. There's an amide, except we now have a urea. Uh, we have a parafluoropyridine. Um, and uh, we now have this um, funny looking um, N oxide, uh, nitro N oxide over on this side. And this compound has been has, has come from machine learning. Um, and before I make it, I want to understand um, if, you know, before I, I spend the time making it, I want to understand if this compound um, does actually show an improved binding affinity to the protein. Otherwise, there's, there's not, you know, a justified reason for making it. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take a 2D structure that we've drawn in ChemDraw. We are going to turn it into a 3D structure using a program called Chem3D. Um, we are going to save that as a mold 2 file. And then we are going to go through the dock prep and uh, uh, docking procedure with Vena that we went through in the last episode, except now we're using our own molecule um, other than uh, we're using our own molecule rather than um, one that's been provided for us from crystal structures. Okay, so these are our own designs. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to convert this 2D structure into a 3D structure. And so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight it, go to edit, copy as smiles. Okay, so we're going to copy a 2D structure as a smile string. Then we're going to go into Chem3D which um, I believe is free to download or you have a free trial for this at least. And then what we're going to do is um, open a new document and edit and paste. Okay, so we've now gone from a 2D structure into a 3D structure. Okay, right. So now before I do anything with this molecule, I would like to know what is the natural lowest energy conformation for this compound. And the reason I want to know that is because when we dock it into the protein um, and that interaction affects the conformation, I want to know how far away from its natural lowest energy conformation is this molecule when it is um, interacting with the protein, because that will give me some indication as to how uncomfortable this molecule is being bound to the protein should we say okay and we can do that easily in chem 3d so all we have to do is go into calculations um, we're going to use this molecular force field method this mmff94 and we are going to do perform minimization so just click that i'm going to enable multi processor support just to allow the calculation to run faster and I'm happy with the iterations and the gradient, so I'm just going to click run. Okay, and you can see it's slightly adjusted that molecule, so it's kind of extended it a little bit. And it's basically now got this molecule in its lowest energy um, conformation, which is kind of like a right angle. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to save that as a mold 2 file. So save as. Um, and I'm going to save that. I'm just going to call it um, molecule one. 
Okay, so now we've got that saved as a multi-file. Next, we are going to go in here, back to Chimera, and we're going to open up our, um, we are going to open up our protein structure. So this is the one from um, episode, Uh, episode two, I believe. So the um, the un uh, doc prepped protein, if you like. So either the multi or the PDB file. Uh, multi is is preferable. Um, so I'm just going to open up the protein. Okay. Then I'm going to doc prep the protein. So we're going to go tools. Surface binding analysis dot prep, and we're not going to delete non-complex ions. Um, we're going to change all the selenar residues to normal residues. We're going to incomplete the side chains like we did last time. Just press OK. Okay, so it's just calculating all the hydrogen bonds. Okay, so now we're going to um, add hydrogens and we want to consider hydrogen bonding for that. So that's fine. So press OK again. And then we're going to add the charges again. So phosphates minus three, zincs plus two. Okay. And now it has got our protein so i'll just share there are windows popping up that you might not be able to see so i'm just sharing the ones and um, to make sure you can see them so i'm just going to save that as the dot prepped version okay so now um we've dot prepped our protein now we need to do the same for our ligands so i'm going to open um i'm going to open um molecule one multi-file and there it is over there so this is the energy minimized um structure that you remember okay so here it is and now i'm going to dot prep that so tools surface by analysis dot prep then we just want to select the molecule sorry again the windows pop up and you can't see them so let me just select that one as well there we go okay so here we are in dot prep um i don't need to worry about the changing the residues for the ligands because it's just the ligand don't need to worry about side chains because it's not a protein i'm um, just going to add hydrogens and add charges okay and write multi-file so add hydrogens again steric only and assign charges. Now you have to be careful here when it's telling us that it's got a net charge of plus one. Um, which is here. Okay, so when we did the charge calculation, it's telling us it's got plus one charge. Um, this isn't actually the case so if we go back and look at the original structure um like last time we've got a tertiary amine but we've got a very electron withdrawing group bound to that um nitrogen so the pka of that of that amine is going to be affected much more um uh it's going to be a lot less uh basic okay um and uh, I did check this in Marvin's sketch. So if we go into Marvin's sketch, I ran this calculation here. And um, it's not until about pH 13 where we start to see any um, uh, variation away from uh, 
from this structure um but but even down to uh so so the only time when we start to see um sorry i can't actually see these structures So, so uh, no instance essentially are are these um, are the tertiary amine uh, going to be protonated? Okay, so oh, here we are. Sorry, I couldn't see it. Right, so um, virtually this um, species here dominates down to about pH zero point six. Um, and at no point do we see protonation of that tertiary amine because of that that electron withdrawing group okay so when it's telling us um go back to chimera when it's telling us there's a net charge of plus one well if we look back at the structure um we have a neutral charge here so this um this is a resonant structure you can imagine so um the plus and the, and the minus cancel out and then again, the plus and the minus cancel out here. So there isn't actually a positive charge here um, overall for this molecule. So I'm going to set the net charge to zero, okay? And if you try and set it to plus one, um, essentially it will just error out because um, it doesn't believe that the charge should be should be plus one, okay? So just be careful of your of your charges. Okay, so now we're just running the dot prep calculation. So it's just calculating the charges for the molecule and saving that as a new mol2 file um so notice that because this molecule is slightly more complicated um we've got uh, various charges on that molecule. Um, the charge calculation is taking a bit longer than it was for the fragment, um, essentially because there's a bit more for the system to to calculate and to think about. So we just have to be patient and and let it run. Okay, so that's now run, um, and we can now save that as um, uh, molecule one doc prepped. So that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to save the multi file. I'm going to save it relative to the protein, and just press save. Okay, so now we have doc prepped both of our um, models, so our protein and our ligand, and now we need to run our calculation again. Um, our docking calculation, okay. So now we need to, again, um, go into tools surface binding analysis and autodoc vena we're going to set the output location first so it showed those windows that are popping up so you can see what i'm seeing and we're going to um, put that in here and i'm just going to call it 
uh, molecule one docking results. Okay. So set that as the output location. Our receptor is our protein. Our ligand is our molecule, same as before. Um, now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define our search area. But this time, you remember, um, we wanted to we wanted to keep it as close to the um, original fragment docking as possible so that we're reducing the number of variables and therefore increasing the reliability of our docking calculation. So what I'm doing here is typing in the um, recorded coordinates from the last session. So you can um, take a picture of these on your phone or you can write them down somewhere as long as you've got those coordinates um written down somewhere so okay and so now i've put those in it's given me the exact same grid that i had my last calculation running in okay so that's exactly what we wanted. And uh, all the settings are the same as last time. And we just check that we're happy with the search space, which we, we should be, because it's the same area as last time. Just gonna check it out close. Yep, that looks fine. And now we're just going to run the calculation. So just press OK. So when I tried to run the Vena calculation, it errored. Um, it said it couldn't. Um, it couldn't run the calculation for the protein, which means there was an error somewhere with the with the doc prep procedure. So what I've done now is I've opened up back our original PDB structure that we saved right at the beginning. So for our fragment ligand here, and I'm just going to use this PDB structure for the doc prep procedure. So we still have our ligand, which is doc prepped here. So I'm just going to get rid of the residue. So just get rid of that ligand. There we go. And now I'm going to um, doc prep the protein. So because I've opened this up, this is now model one. So just be aware of the numbering of the um, of the protein and the ligand. Um, so we've got to run through this procedure again. So apologies for this. Um, so we're going to consider hydrogen bonding and now it's added in our hydrogens. Um, so this is looking more promising because it's now added in the hydrogens and we can see them. Um, now we need to add our charges. Okay. Phosphates. Are minus three and zinc's are plus two. So, okay. I was going to calculate those and now I'm just going to call this one um, protein dark preps again. Okay. So Okay, so now we have our protein and we have our ligand, both dot prepped again. So now we're going to go into tools, surface bind analysis, autodoc vena, 
we're going to set the output file again. Um, molecule one docking results. So that was the output location. So our receptor now is model one and our ligand is model zero. Okay, and then we need to type in our grid again. So minus 40, eight. And again, these are the um, coordinates from the last session that um, you will have just made a note of um, to keep these the same. So eight, two, three, one. 21.5402, Okay, so there's our grid again, and everything else is the same. So we are happy. So if we press OK, then the calculation is now running. Perfect. So now we're running the calculation for our new molecule that we've designed ourselves. And we're docking out on the protein in the same grid or the same search volume that we ran the fragment in. And what we're hoping to see is that the um, the calculated um, Gibbs free energy, the binding affinity, is more negative or more thermodynamically favorable. Okay, so um, the lowest score from last time was minus five point two, and so we are hoping to see something more negative than minus five point two. So if we take a look at the table that's just popped up, we see that the lowest energy conformer, I'll put this table to one side, the lowest energy binding mode has a score calculated at minus 6.2, which is good. So that's a... Um, minus one kill uh, kilocal uh, per mole improvement in the binding affinity, which is excellent. That's what exactly what we're after here. So we've already seen an improvement in the binding score, okay? And in fact, the lowest um, score, minus 5.3, is even better than the lowest score for the fragment. So that's already a good sign. So we can look at some of the binding modes here. Um, but obviously what we're most interested in is looking at the binding interactions and figuring out why that binding score has improved. Um, cause all we have here are the scores. We don't know why, why that score is better. Okay. So what we are going to do is save this session. Um, uh, So we've saved that, and now we're going to save the PDB. So Okay, so then we're going to save all of those as a single file, as a um, as a single multi file, uh, sorry, as a PDB file. Um, we're going to save them relative to the protein. So just make sure that you're saving relative to the protein model, and then just save. Now we go back into BioVis Studio. So we're back here again, and we're going to open up the PDB uh, file, the results file.
Okay, so again, we have our um, uh, we have our protein. So first thing I want to do is get rid of the uh, water molecules. Um, so this is our undocked ligand. So this is from the original structure. So um, we're not too interested in it, but we may want to keep it around just to be able to study the change in the conformations. Um, that might tell us something interesting later on. So we'll keep that around for now. So um, we are going to uh, look at the ligand interactions here. Um, so we are just going to scroll through those. Okay, so that's our lowest energy conformer, and we are just going to um, Um, apologies there. So, so I forgot that there's a slight uh, difference in the method when dealing with um, non-crystallized uh, molecules. So let me just run through that um, and explain. So we're going to go back to opening our um, results file from our docking. Okay, so here we are again, and then we're going to get rid of the water molecules and then we're going to go through the binding modes one by one okay so this is the lowest energy binding mode so the minus 6.21 then what we need to do is we need to double click on this ligand so it comes up in yellow then we go to non-bond interactions Um, I just want to check that you're able to see that. Um, you should be able to see that. I'll check the recording afterwards. Um, so we want to tick all the interaction types. So hydrogen bonding, electrostatic, hydrophobic, other unfavorable um, bumps, um, um, positive, positive, negative, negative. So we want to take those into account as well. And we are looking for any atom-atom interaction. And we are looking at any interaction with selection. So we've selected the ligand, so it's going to look for anything that interacts with that. So, OK. And now you see that it has drawn in some interactions there. Um, and so what we can do is um, go to our if I double click on our thickened again and hydrophobic surface. Um, Hi, yep. So, yep. Sorry. So, this is the, um, so this is the method for looking at our own molecules. So, in um, docking tutorials, we want to get up our, um, our receptor. So. 
So we open that as one. Then we open up our binding modes as our second one. Just share my screen so you can see. Um, so we want to open up our binding modes. Okay, so first thing I want to do is um, I want to get rid of this one down here. So I'm just going to delete that one. That's our undocked one. Um, I'm going to get rid of the waters. I'm going to go into interactions um we're going to start with our lowest energy conformer and so first thing we need to do is define our receptor so that's our protein so i'm going to double click on the protein then i need to define our ligand so I'll double click on the ligand and then i will go into ligand interactions so you can see i've clicked ligand interactions there and now it's showing us our ligand interactions. And now I'm just going to do the hydrophobic surface around that pocket as we did before. So just expand that. There we go. And then I also want to label um, our amino acids. And I would also like to um, go into uh, interaction options and make sure that it's showing us all of the interactions and shows us the distance and shows us the type of interaction that we're looking at as well. Okay, so here we are, we have our own molecule which we have designed and docked and now we are looking at the lowest energy binding um, confirmation which had a score of minus 6.2 which is a improvement of uh, negative one in terms of the um, the uh, binding enthalpy so that's very good so let's have a look here so as as we would expect we're seeing um, we're seeing interactions with uh, the fluoropyridine. So we're seeing a fluorine um, hydrogen bond. We're seeing some interaction um, with the carbonyl and the fluorine. We're seeing a pi alkyl bond with the aromatic. We're also seeing that pi cation bond that we saw before. Um, and we've got a few additional interactions. So, um, oops, apologies. So, we've got a carbonyl bonding interaction here. And we've also got a, um, ah, this is a water. So, um, it's saying that a water molecule is interacting there, but we're, we're less interested in that because we are more interested in the interaction with the um, with the protein itself. So I'm going to delete that. Um, so interestingly, there's not any direct interactions with um, the uh, nitro group, which is interesting, or the anoxide for that matter. However, if we look at the next confirmation, we do see some interaction there. So that N oxide um, is getting involved with some new hydrogen bonding interactions. So we're still seeing that pi cation interaction. We're still seeing the fluorine interaction. So we've not far removed that out of the pocket. So um, that, that pi cation interaction is 3.29 to 3.77. And that fluorine um, 
hydrogen bond has gone from uh, um, 2.63 to, ah, well, it's actually gone. So we've now got a, um, a, a kind of, uh, a, a different interaction now which which if we look at the 2d character map um it's classified as a halogen uh interaction okay um um so now we've also got a dual hydrogen bonding interaction with uh this asn 503 residue um and interestingly if we um so we can see that there's interaction with that n oxide with this proline i'll just show you on here the labels so with the proline here and with this alanine 505 so 504 and 505 as well as 503 are interacting with that n oxide so there's some interesting information to be gathered here. So we can now start to see how um, that N oxide is um, benefiting the binding of the molecule. Okay. Um, and how adding that extra carbonyl group, so going from an amide to a urea, has also improved the binding. Okay. So this gives us some really good information, some really useful information there. Um, and of course, we can flick through the um you can flick through these look at some of the other interactions here so again more hydrogen bonding um there's a water interaction here um again that pi cation interaction um carbonyl bonding again and the oxide involved in hydrogen bonding in a different um with a different residue um so in this instance it's with uh residue 470 um so so this is this is good because this is telling us that if we look at um that n oxide um, since it's not buried in the pocket, we'd expect it to be rotating fairly freely. But when it does, it seems to be um, forming uh, hydrogen bonds with various different residues. So if it does rotate, it kind of gets captured again by by um, by that uh, hydrogen bond interaction. Okay, so some really cool information here. So we can gather a lot. And we can start to um, figure out why the binding mode might be, or why the binding of is suggested to be stronger um, now that we've uh, made that structure versus the original fragment that we doxed. Okay, so you could go through these and you could analyze them uh, one by one. You could you could make your own judgments as to which ones seem the most reasonable. Um, and you can you can generate 2D um, interaction diagrams to to work out which parts of the molecule are most useful. Okay, so there we have it. We have um, docked our own molecule, which we've designed, and we have analyzed the um, binding scores. Um, we've seen the improvement in the scores, and then we've um, studied the interactions to hazard a guess as to why that has led to an improvement in the binding affinity okay so i hope this has been a very useful um uh, uh tutorial um and we can go through some further um videos if needed um to 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 see if we can improve the binding affinity further okay so thank you very much for joining um, and any links to the related software will be below um, the, the videos once they're uploaded. So thank you very much.